Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Is that yeah. good? Yep. Uh, hello, Adepticon 2024. <laughs> We want to welcome to the AMG 2024 Adepticon Roadmap. Uh, today, for those who wandered into this room accidentally and were just like, look at this party, I gotta, I gotta hang out and see what's going on. Uh, we're gonna be going through uh, the future roadmaps for Star Wars Shatterpoint, Star Wars Legion, and Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, it's important to note, effectively what we like to do with these things is kind of give you a view of about 12 months into the future. So we're gonna be talking about things that are coming out soon, we're going to talk about things that are coming out a little later, and then we might have a couple of special surprises for things that are coming out much later, uh, just to give you all an idea of what to be excited for, what's on the horizon, uh, and so that we can all celebrate the games that brought us here. Hopefully you all had fun and clean in the events. I know that there was an amazing turnout for pretty much everything. We broke records all across the way in terms of the uh, Worlds events, and as well as the brand new Shatterpoint events that ran for the first time this year. Um, so we're really excited to build on that. It's so fun to hang out with all of you, uh, get to see all of your faces, get to see all of your hard work, the hobby, see the excitement around the games. It really energizes us uh, as a group, and I have so many of my compatriots right up front. They're going to heckle me nonstop as I do this, I'm sure. Woo! Wow, man! Wow! <laughs> I'm your boss. I'm your boss. <laughs> Like, the rest of them might get away, but I am your boss. <laughs> it's fine. I love you, Ben. Um, so, uh, without much further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. And we're going to start with Star Wars Shatterpoint. Um, so, if you uh, joined us for either the roadmap last year, or maybe you joined us for our uh, annual online event, Mini Stravaganza, where we also like to hang out and uh, do a thing from our home office in Everett to show off some of the cool stuff, uh, you have seen that Commander Ivan Versio from Battlefront 2 fame was planned for Star Wars Shadowpoint. I'm proud to announce that today the Rebellion Dies squad pack will be hitting uh, in June of 2024. This year is the projected date. Uh, one of the changes that we made from the roadmaps is lots of people like to ask questions who are not here. These things get shared on, on the web among the communities. When is this thing coming out? We saw it. When is it coming out? So we've added a little bug for a projected release date for everything that you're going to see or a quarter. Um, to hopefully answer those questions. So, uh, Aiden is a monster. She does some really great things for Galactic Empire. Um, the rest of her squad, Del Mico, Gideon Hast, very fun to play with. You can either play with Del Mico as the supporting character in the unit or the unit, uh, the squad, unit squad. I'm going to get all of my terms mixed up as I'm up here. Uh, or you can swap in the Imperial Special Forces. So, there's an option in the squad pack for how you want to build it, or of course, you can add any of those characters to the things as you want to do. Then just keeps changing. All right, it's good. Um, so we have that coming out in June. We also have the yeah. yeah. um, These two continue kind of the trend of the Galactic Civil War era being based uh, initially around Return of the Jedi. Um, so these characters are kind of how we see them in the Episode Six uh, Return of the Jedi movie, especially some of the stuff you see on Endor. You'll see that Han has a lot of quotes that he says. Um, as he kind of improvs his way through uh, a very critical mission for the Re Rebellion. Um, Chewie is an excellent st supporting character who is really great at protecting his primary friends um, and also has some very strong uh, potential in combat, as you would expect from a Wookiee. Um, these two were very fun to work on. Michael Plummer, our lead developer, did a great job of taking the designs and really capturing them on the table. Uh, they offer a lot of stuff to both Rebel Alliance and Scoundrel players. Um, so we're really excited to see how they'll pair on the tabletop uh, and compete in all the different Shatterpoint squad options, and they'll also be out in June. Moving on to the next one, we have the third mission pack, Never Tell Me the Odds. Uh, this mission pack builds on the last two, so this kind of completes our trilogy of three mission packs that were built alongside to start the game. Uh, this one is all about taking gambles and risks, so as you go through the different struggles, you have the chance to challenge the odds. By doing so, you may gain more momentum and uh, success in the struggles. Um, however, it may force you to do things that may or may not be tactically sound at the time in order to gain the benefit. Uh, so this one's really fun. The layout is very different, of course, and the way the struggles uh, progress do require a different kind of strike team um, build, as well as different play tactics. And we're very excited to see the three of them finally in the overall ecosystem of the game and how they will adapt and change things. <laughs> Really quick, I don't have a slide for this, but I also want to let everyone know 
that with the conclusion of these three, there will be more mission packs in the future, so there will be a regular cadence of the standard mission packs. We also have some big surprises that we're going to be talking about at Ministrata in terms of where Shatterpoint is going next, in terms of game modes and some new and unique ways to play. So I'm very excited to get to that, but you'll have to tune in in July when we hold Mini Stravaganza 2024, uh, and we'll be dropping some of that information. So uh, lots of new and exciting opportunities on the horizon for Shatterpoint as we get close to the end of its first year, and we can't wait to uh, really dive in because we only scratched the surface of our plans for these games. So let's take a look at... <laughs> Because we love you and because we love Adepticon, you're getting a very exclusive sneak peek at the characters that have been asked most about, I think, overall in the community, and that is the Crew of the Ghosts. So, for those who are wondering, the Crew of the Ghosts is split into two distinct squad packs. The first one is the Stronger Than Fear squad pack. This features Clown and Jairus uh, and Zeb Aurelios, as well as Ezra Bridger, as the supporting, or as the secondary character, excuse me, Zeb is the supporting character. Um, these were really a love letter by our developer, Michael Plummer, uh, who is the biggest fan of Rebels, and, and as well as Michael Plummer, who loves Rebels, we have Ryan Ritter, our graphic designer, who worked on Shadowpoint, did a lot of the original uh, development on the cards, and the look, and the style, and the visualization. Um, they're both massive Rebels fans, it's their favorite thing in Star Wars. So it was really fun to watch them passion project their way through these, these characters, um, and we came up with a group that works amazingly together, synergistically on the table, and absolutely kills it when it comes to delivering the theme and the narrative, and they slot very well into other squads as well. Um, but I said there's two packs, so we have one more slide, and that is Make the Impossible. Um, that pack includes Hera as the primary, Sabine Wren, of course, as the supporting, and Chopper, everyone's favorite murder droid, yes. as the supporting yes. character. Um, I, I've never heard Plummer and Ben laugh as hard as when Chopper was just causing havoc on the tables and the playtests, on the playtest things. Um, so again, these packs will be out in July. Very excited. Uh, if you watch our social media, Anne and our marketing team has a very fun uh, little campaign going on. Uh, the Empire might be asking you to help target rebel activity uh, across the course of the next month or so. Um, and we have some really cool store support and organized play stuff that's going to be happening at Wellness alongside of these guys. Um, so watch out for that. We're pretty thrilled to finally be bringing these folks into the game. Uh, and of course, when there's Rebel activity, who are you going to call? You're going to call... <laughs> so, uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn finally makes his appearance into a Star Wars miniatures game. Um, not accepting surrenders is, of course, Thrawn based on his appearances in Star Wars Rebels. Uh, Thrawn brings a brand new mechanic to Star Wars Shadowpoint. I'm not going to spoil too much about it, um, but he does he does build off of some of the things you might have seen in the Ewoks. Um, and additionally, his little friend there, um, the ISP agents, and oh my gosh, I've totally blanked on his name. Oh, no. Hey, hey Callus. I know. And see, I was going to freeze up on one thing, and I was like, well, it might as well be the thing that you love the most, which is Agent Callus. Now, you'll notice that Mr. Callus here uh, does have his, like, really beautiful mutton chops that he gets throughout the show of the season. Um, and you might be saying, well, when he gets those, when he gets the crazy hair that Simone Elliott loves, because she loves, she loves the boy band hair. It's uh, the hot Callus hair. The hot Callus hair, I'm sorry. That's now... That's now on stream for the internet to know. <laughs> hot Callus. Hot Callus. Um, he, he has some shifting loyalties, right? He's not. He's not entirely sure if he's going to be part of the Empire anymore, um, and that is reflected in his character. So he has a new, unique mechanic that actually allows the players to choose his allegiances at the start of the game. So he's got a little bit of double agent action, uh, and he can also pair very well with either the crew of the Ghost or with his Imperial counterparts, depending on how you want to play him. So. Uh, really fun, really thematic stuff that we were able to work on. We're excited to share more of their rules in the coming future, but that's some teasers for that, uh, for not accepting surrenders. Expect to see Thrawn trying to lock down the rebel insurgency that's going to be populating all of our social media for the next month or so. Uh, and you can either help or hinder. It's up to you. All right, so moving on beyond not accepting surrenders, we have good soldiers follow orders. Uh, so I know we just previewed the Bad Batch for Shatterpoint. And a lot of players were asking, why isn't Crosshair is somehow Galactic Empire? Well, the answer to that is, is because, as we've talked about before, we really like to capture characters within a specific moment so that we can really devote the rules and the thematics behind the characters 
and how they function on the tabletop to that moment in time. So we don't like to dilute characters if uh, it doesn't make sense. And because Crosshair working for the Empire with his elite troopers uh, and his special squad was such a big part of the Bad Batch story arc, um, especially around the season one time, which is where the Bad Batch that we created for Shatterpoint to start was really focused on, uh, we felt it was only proper that we give players the opportunity to play with Imperial Crosshairs in all of his glory as a primary unit, along with his compatriots. Um, Crosshairs, for me, is one of my favorite characters that we've done. I really enjoy sniper characters, and he is a real monster when it comes to shooting with that rifle of his. So uh, this unit will add more options and opportunities to Galactic Empire as well as other squads. Um, it's also very fun to pair the squad with the Bad Batch, just personally, because it's it's uh, it's pretty brutal. So with that, um, that's going to be coming out in quarter four of 2024, um, and I believe the flamethrower special trooper whose number I don't remember, maybe Ben remembers it, maybe Kirsten remembers it. Oh, you failed. Pagani, <laughs> write-ups. Get on it. <laughs> The, the Flamethrower Trooper was definitely one of the ones in playtest that got a lot of feedback. Uh, much Kathleen was had and much consternation was had over how we were able to implement the idea of a Flamethrower Trooper into Shatterpoint. So I'm excited to share that one as well. And if you like black, well, it's, it's back in black. So moving on to the next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, once again, you couldn't time it better. It's like we plan these things. We just released the rules for the Mandalorian and Child, Din Djarin and Grogu. Um, he needed some Mandalorian friends. He's part of the Mandalorian covert, so we're we're super excited. Uh, this is Pagani's boy right here, Paz Vizla, uh, to introduce these characters um, and really bring the idea of being able to play a more Mando-centric force, especially a very thematic, uh, the Mandalorian uh, Disney Plus show force to the forefront. Um, Paz Vizsla is one of my favorite designs that we've done. He does some very cool things, very Paz Vizsla things. And if you really want to say this is the way, this is the squad pack for you because all of them have an ability uh, that has this is the way as part of the title. So you can really live out your Mandalorian dreams uh, when you're playing with your opponent and drive them insane. <laughs> so next slide, please. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so the end of the year is really going to focus pretty heavily on episode 5 um, and Empire Strikes Back. This, you'll notice, this is an important beat right here. We don't need their scum, accurate, unit pack. Um, what is a unit pack? So this is not a squad pack. Um, so this, this box is different from the previously released Shadowpoint boxes in that all of these characters are secondary characters. Um, so they do not represent a playable squad out of the pack. Instead, they are options that you can mix into your squads uh, in Shatterpoint to add variety, to add some bounty hunter like strength, and all that stuff. All these characters are based off of their appearance in Empire Strikes Back. Um, each one was very fun to work on, and they all bring their own unique flair and flavor to everything. I do want to point out that Dengar was sculpted by our own internal um, Ben. Brian. 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 Also, Boss was out. Oh, Boss was too? Okay, so Brian, no, Brian, who's one of our internal engineers, is the first one to come to us. Brian doesn't, doesn't skull. Just too many B words. No, well, I screwed up twice. I get one more and then they kick me off the stage. Um, so, yeah, so again, this, this box uh, was a joy to work on. It was awesome to go back to these. these, these Fantastic characters who've got like five seconds of screen time but captured the imagination for the next 40 years um, of Star Wars lore and mythology and all that good stuff. Um, I said we were going to, at the end of the year, was going to focus on um, Empire Strikes Back, so we do have a couple more that are going to be coming in the end of the year, and that first one is. <laughs> next, with Firepower, uh, General Beers leading his Hoth Snow Troopers along with the Snow Trooper Officer. Um, General Beers is a really interesting primary, as you're going to discover as we dive into some of his rules and stuff. We'll likely be covering this box in more detail at Mini Stravaganza in July. Uh, however, it suffice to say that General Beers is not about getting his hands dirty. He is all about bringing in um, off-table bombardments from his uh, his, a his ATATs and ATSTs that we don't see necessarily on the table in Chatterpoint, and then of course driving his his soldiers under his command 
um, to greater feats of self-sacrifice in the name of the Empire. So um, Beers is a really unique one in terms of what we've seen so far for the Empire in that all of these primaries have been very aggressively focused between Vader, Aiden, and everything else. Beers kind of takes a step back and uh, he becomes more of the tactician and the strategist behind everything. And then the last pack for the year is going to be... So, Lando obviously uh, started the Galactic Civil War um, era at, in his Jabba the Hutt disguise, um, but it was only right and proper that we immediately jumped to showing him in all of his glory as a primary unit as the administrator of Bespin. You stop. <laughs> That's what we're here for. That is. You're just here to laugh and cackle at my expense. I get it. Um, so we have Lando Calrissian, administrator of Bespin, uh, Lobot, and his wing guard. It was one of the interesting things about this squad was really diving into the idea that they are a security force, they're a police force, and what their role is on Cloud City and how that played into Shatterpoint. And of course, Lando uh, does build on the idea of those shifting loyalties. So as we know, uh, spoiler alert, he does, he does change sides <laughs> quite a bit in Empire Strikes Back. I won't give you the big spoiler, though. I don't want to ruin it for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> we will not be talking about parentage in this building right now. We're all not um, so he does have a similar rule to Callus, where you get to choose uh, where his loyalties lie, which affects his tags, and then his identity plays into that as well. Um, so he makes a he makes a very fun and uh, unique character in that he works well on both the Galactic Empire and the Rebel Alliance sides, as well as just being a scoundrel in general. Uh, so that's the end of the year. I said that we were going to look uh, into the future, and then we were going to look a little further into the future. So let's look a little further into the future. Oh. We're going to go back uh, to the Clone Wars, yeah. specifically with requesting your surrender squad pack. This brings Jedi Master Kit Fisto, his uh, former Padawan, now promoted to Jedi Knight and Nadar Beb, uh, along with the Phil's clone. So if you've watched the Clone Wars episodes where uh, they go after Grievous, uh, in his lair, this squad pack is very much based on that that mini arc in the show. Um, and uh, Alex, thank you, thank you for pointing to yourself to remind me, because um, I knew. So these two characters were done by our own Alex, uh, right here in the front row. So I'm sure on these sculpts; they're glorious and gorgeous. Um, so has the most beautiful glowy eyes uh, ever ever put to the miniature. Um, and again, these characters will be coming, uh, but they are currently in progress, and they'll be hitting store shelves somewhere in the quarter one 2025 vicinity. Um, but that's not it. They're going to bring some more Jedi friends into a different pack. Oh. <laughs> Wisdom of the Council squad pack. So this will, this will ideally debut right alongside um, not accepting surrender. So Kai Adi Mundi of the Jedi Council will be the primary in that pack, and this pack will include and introduce a supporting unit of Jedi Padawan learners. So the Jedi Padawans, which is the um, Kit Fisto looking, what's the name of that race? Nautilus. Nautilus, thank you. I was going to say Des Moines, and I was like, that is 100% wrong. But it did, I had the N right. Um, one of the really fun things about the uh, Padawans in that pack is they're going to have a couple of different head options, so you don't have to necessarily use a Nautilus. Um, you will have a couple of different options as well to customize your Padawans with that. Um, together, these these crews start to bring together the idea that if you want to run all sabers, you can do that on the Galactic Republic side, which is something we see quite a bit. Uh, and I think that's it. So all we have left is the one you're going to want to take a picture of because it's the timeline of when these things are projected to come out with all of the packs and everything along the way. Um, so that again, when somebody on your chat groups or in your community is like, hey, I heard about this cool thing, uh, when is it coming? You have a little bit of an expected roadmap for it's coming so that you can answer it without having to go back and listen to me ramble for two hours or whatever it's going to be here. So for Star Wars Legion and our roadmap, we have some exciting things to share. We have a couple of card previews that I know people have been clamoring about and we have not shared yet because we wanted to save them for this moment where we can share them in person with all of you. Uh, it's going to start with the Range Troopers. 
Oh my God. Uh, so of course, drawn from Solo, a Star Wars story, uh, with their cool Kiki magnetic boots. Um, the Range Troopers are part of our initiative internally to begin to expand kind of the traditional roles and thoughts about where the units would fall. So I think you know a couple of years ago, we would have expected the Range Troopers to be special forces. Um, but starting with the Dark Troopers, we really wanted to say, okay, there are all these other slots in Legion. Adding more options and opportunities to those increases the diversity of list build. It lets players like really start to customize their force. And for us, the lore and the canon behind Range Troopers led them to the support slot. Um, so they're going to be added as a support option for Imperial players. And then, uh, kind of following along the same idea, a new support slot for Galactic Republic is the Clone Commandos. Um, the Clone Commandos have quite a few things going for them. Um, they, of course, are very durable. They have the Katarn pattern armor, which is very unique. Um, these were worked through by our own Andrew Dursum. Uh, he had a lot of fun working with the variable armaments um, that their DC-17M ICWS blaster carbine uh, allows. So they do have some cool rules where they can swap. And you'll see on the miniature side, we did sculpt it in a way, and I think Dallas has talked about this before, where you have the options to do all the different configurations and all the different troopers. So uh, you can kind of build the squad to suit whatever weapon style you feel is best or looks best on the tabletop for you. Those will be coming out in May. Uh, and then we have the next one, which folks who play yeah. in the set yeah. on the board, um, or at least of the basic unit card, but this is another one that was really fun to work on internally and that Andrew Durson had a lot of work to do on, because it, the question became, how do you represent a character unit in Legion? How do, you, how do you make each individual feel unique? How do you take that idea of this team and of the Bad Batch and translate it into a, into a large-scale combat game that is mostly focused on units without having each character be individual. So the solution, as people have kind of figured out now, is you get a lot of heavy weapon slots, and you have to equip all of them to make the unit. Um, I know folks have been wondering where or what or if the Rebel Alliance version of these um, characters was a real thing. It is. Uh, as the Omega counterpart card here shows, they will be mercenaries that are allowed in Rebel Alliance lists. Um, and Omega is only, is only usable in that version of the squad as a counterpart. Um, so we're very excited to see these hit, hit the tabletops and have players really get the chance to kind of explore what this unique operative unit can do. Um, and you'll get your chance in July of 2024. Looking a little bit forward towards the end of the year, these ones are very special to us. Uh, this unit, again, sculpted by our own Alex uh, internally. Um, and if you saw the bumpers that we had on the prize wall, you might have seen the full piece of the two pieces of art that we're going to be showing, uh, where our Rebel Sleeper Cell unit is fighting the Imperial Riot Control Scott, which we're going to get to next. Um, amazing piece, art directed by our own Preston Stone, uh, showing kind of the, the narrative and the visual idea behind this. this. These two units that we're going to show next are really special to AMG because they were a chance for us to work with NFL and our partners over there um, on the Star Wars stuff closely to say, okay, let's take some core concepts and ideas, things we've seen uh, sporadically throughout the different media, the TV shows, the movies, the novels, everything else, and come up with a way to kind of solidify those ideas, the idea of like a sleeper cell um, that we see in maybe in Andor, right? The, the group of people who rise up against the Empire, and use their ability to blend into the society, or the culture that they're in and, and strike from the shadows, do sabotage, do guerrilla tactics. How do we represent that in Legion to bring something new to the Rebel Alliance players? Um, and so working through that, we got some really, some really cool ideas. We were able to do some really fun stuff. We're going to talk a lot more about the details of that come mini Stravaganza in July. Um, but it, is, it was a blast to be able to do that. We love it when LFL um, kind of lets us play a little bit and works with us to create something that's slightly new. Um, or a new concept in that. And one of the best parts of that is when you get to do something thematic and then you get to play test it and see the story unfold before your eyes. And so when these, uh, well, when these fine folks, um, depending on your point of view, are causing problems and blowing things up in the neighborhood, who are you gonna call? You're gonna call the Imperial Riot Control Squad. <laughs> and 
and again, this was this was a concept that came about from a lot of different things that we've seen in media, Fall in Order as well, um, on the on the video game side, things in Andor, and the idea was, okay, we know that riot control troopers exist, but how would they really function in a game like Legion? How do we bring them together to create a full unit? Um, the addition of the K2 security droids was really inspired by what we see in Andor when he gets arrested. Our own creative director, Dallas Kemp, loves the K2 droids, has been asking since the very start how he gets more of them into his Empire army. Uh, and this unit is definitely the way. So you can attach two of them to the unit through the upgrade cards. And uh, these stormtroopers are, are pretty brutal once they get in there with their shock batons and their riot control shields. So they add some serious core melee punch uh, to Galactic Empire armies. And there's nothing better than beating up a bunch of snakes. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Um, so we showed we showed this crabby boy uh, last mini extravaganza, but here he is in all of his painted glory. He'll also be released projected quarter four of 2024. Um, you will get two in the pack uh, as well, so you can do any of the two weapon options uh, that he'll come with. And what can you say? It's a crab droid. He's the small crab droid, not the big crab droid, but he's the best crab droid. Yeah. And we can't wait to see that all over the place. This pack here, oh, and I should say the crab droid was Evan, yes. So, going back, the Riot Control Trooper Squad was Evan, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. I want to make sure I'm giving the clock to the Riot Control Trooper So, Evan, who leads our team of engineers, has been with us almost all five years now of our existence, which is an amazing marker to hit uh, for us as a student and everything. Um, he excels and loves making robotic or mechanical hardline things. So we're really fortunate to have him do that. Um, the terrain pack here, one of the one of our big pushes and the thing that we always want to make sure is that our, our battlefields that we play on that are so important to the game experience are thematic, that players have access to critical pieces of terrain. I think we can all agree that the old barricade pack was great. It did what it needed to do, but maybe we're a little tired of seeing those barricades. Uh, maybe we want a little diversity in our barricades. So this box was a passion project internally where we said, okay, how do we create a system of terrain that can add more barricades to the player's collections in interesting and visual ways, can add ruins and rubble and things like that. So all of the things you see here, which this isn't a complete box, it's just kind of a, an example setup, is customizable. So each little like break in the wall section, you can assemble those in different ways. You can make long walls, you can make curved walls, you can make little, uh, little like courtyards and things like that. You can have fully destroyed buildings. There's a lot of potential in this to customize it for what you need or what you want for your tabletops. Very excited to see these things pop up next year at Adepticon and how they change the table environment. But it was a fun one to work on. And of course, terrain is so important to creating and setting the stage for where we play. And then... Uh, so, the Octodroids is a brand new, a brand new CIS unit that's gonna be coming. I cannot really explain to you how big these things are. Um, yeah. When, when we did the initial sculpt and we got the printouts, we immediately turned to Evan who had sculpted them and said, what did you do? Because you obviously did these wrong. Um, because we all thought they'd be, you know, dark trooper size. They're not. They are, they are massive and they are amazing. And uh, yeah, so um, you'll notice they're on the notch bases. That kind of gives you an idea for how chunky these boys are. Um, very fun, exciting stuff. We're, we're really looking forward to finishing the process on them, showing off the painted miniatures, and then getting into uh, what they do on the tabletop, because it's pretty brutal. Next one that's in the future. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. New sculpted by our own engineer, Kevin, uh, who is the <laughs> office of the Chromium. So if you have a clone self problem, he'll solve it. Uh, and of course, the art troopers are gonna be coming um, to add some, yeah, see, forgot about it. it. That's all I needed. I just needed one person to laugh, and then I can keep going. Um, so the art troopers uh, are going to be a great unit uh, that will add some additional options to Galactic Republic. But I think the thing that really makes them exciting players will be the next slide, which is the attachment that goes with them. <laughs> Uh, so one of our big pushing points, and you're going to see this kind of evolve uh, over the coming releases as we push even more into the future, in 2025, just to note, is going to be a big year for us. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of like right on the cusp of like a big explosion of a lot of things. 
Um, we've been working really hard on, we mentioned at last week's extravaganza the whole idea of we're taking all of the soft plastic Legion releases, we're moving them into hard plastic. Uh, we have a lot of really killer new sculpts and new characters and new releases and stuff. Um, and if you caught the uh, That's No Moon interview that I did, I talked a lot about, we talked a bit about faction identity and pushing into faction identity. And what does that mean and how, how do we make these different four factions very unique and interesting alongside battle forces? Um, we've been doing a lot of work internally that's finally coming to fruition. Again, we always mention how our timeline cycles are two years from concept to completion. Sometimes big projects take a little longer. Um, but this is a, a bit of a view into the explosion of Legion stuff that you're going to start seeing come next to DEF CON when we're together. Um, we're going to have a lot of really cool stuff that will be finally ready to show. Uh, this little guy, though, uh, is the start of that idea um, and moving more and more non-named Jedi, more sabers into Galactic Republic forces who want to run that mixed force that we see. Uh, it does come with the ARC Troopers, but he's also attachable to the ARC Troopers. So. Um, your special forces get a lot of a lot of Jedi lightsaber uh, um, support. And then next slide. So uh, I've already forgotten who did this. Mike. Mike. Mike Jones. Of course, I'm gonna Mike Jones. Uh, so uh, his name is so fun to say. Uh, so our sculpting manager who coordinates and works with all of our amazing freelance sculptors, Mike Jones. He actually did this new Obi-Wan resculpt. So again, I mentioned that we've been talking a lot about this big project we've undertaken to replace all of these soft plastic miniatures over the course of the next few years into hard plastic. Um, Obi-Wan, it was time. He needed, he needed a new, fresh look, uh, and Mike just killed it. The likeness is one of the best Ewan McGregor likenesses that I've ever seen. It looks amazing in miniature, not just blown up on the screen. Um, and yeah, we're really excited about the possibility. Of course, if you're going to have a new a new Obi Wan, it's probably time to do a little update to his yeah. Yeah. His, uh, his classic and iconic nemesis. So Grievous, even though Grievous wasn't hard plastic, he was sculpted at a time uh, when we were still learning the process. Uh, all of the sculptors internally at Asmodee, it was a new it was a new system, it was a new material, and so well, he turned out really well for the time. We we knew that we could have our own Bexley, uh, who has worked on um, Armada, X-Ray, lots of the second part screen, who's been a lot of stuff. He was sad. I talk about all the things that we're going to get to show here in the coming year uh, because of how the how timelines kind of work and stuff. And Bexley, we were having a conversation where he's like, I, it's been a long time since they've shown any of my stuff because like <laughs> I did a lot of things, but they've taken a while. Um, so next year, I'm going to be calling out Bexley like, four, five, six, seven, twenty times. It's gonna be like every slide of it. Bexley did this, and Bexley did this. So he's amazing, we love him. Um, and he did this Grievous here. So of course there are multiple pose options for Grievous. You can build them a couple different ways. Um, kind of a nod back to the way it was before. So these will be coming in summer of 2025, uh, similar to the resculpts for the commandos and the rebel troopers, uh, stormtroopers that we showed off at Mini Strab last year. So uh, lots of work happening behind the scenes, lots of exciting developments. Um, we're going to be sharing a lot more of that stuff as we get closer. So July mini strap 2024 uh, coming up. Watch for those dates if you're interested in Legion. We have some pretty cool surprises, and we'll be able to give a much more crystal clear view of all of the things that are coming uh, over the next 18 months. And that brings us to the end of what we can show for this roadmap. So again, here is your timeline. Uh, so in case you forget or want to remember anything as to what's coming out overall, uh, it's right there for you.